So welcome everybody to this Chainlink Node Operator FEQ. Um, first of all, big thanks to Chainlink and the organizers of the SmartCon for making all of this possible. And we will start with a brief introduction about us and um, our background. So this is Rob, I'm Roger. We are the co-founders of Link River, a Chainlink community uh, node operator. Um, and we are basically some childhood friends who uh, decided to spin up Chainlink nodes while watching the SmartCon last year. So we are even more happy and honored to uh, um, host this panel right now. And yeah, we used our initial infrastructure to participate in the virtual Chainlink hackathon where we supported several developer teams by spinning up testnet nodes on various networks, hosting and deploying external adapters for them. So we could gain a lot of hands-on experience about Chainlink node operations. And um, yeah, then we heard about the Oracle Olympics, a competition hosted by Chainlink, giving community node operators the chance to get added to the prize feeds. So yeah, we heavily prepared for this competition. We participated, we were lucky enough to win it and are now participating in multiple prize feed dons on uh, public blockchains, sidechains, and layer two. So yeah, we are literally living dream. And besides all of this, we've been sharing our experiences and insights by publishing research and developer guides and documentation um, to facilitate the deployment and maintenance of training nodes for other node operators. and. Um, yeah, we recently also joined the developer export program launched by Chainlink Labs with the goal to educate as many people as possible about uh, spot contracts and Oracle technology. And yeah, we're also spending quite a lot of time on the official Chainlink Discord server, more precisely in the node operators channel. I think especially for Roberts, something like his second living room. And yeah, we've been asking all our questions there in the past and are now trying to answer questions and uh, create a solid foundation for aspiring node operators and developers. And yeah, we noticed that um, there's quite a huge amount of questions that um, are asked over and over again, and they all come down to the central question, how to become a Chainlink node operator. And just as a brief um, disclaimer, this FAQ goes beyond the technical guides for the deployment of an initial node um, set up, which is perfectly described in uh, the official chaining docs. Everybody should check them out. And um, yeah, this goes beyond it and covers additional strategic, economic, and um, technical integrations and considerations. So please make sure to do your own research. And having said all of this, I'll pass the mic to Rob to start off with the first question. Yeah, so... Thanks for that. And hey, everyone. I'm also glad to be here and a warm welcome from my side as well. So let us start with a couple of technical decisions we as node operators are confronted with. And first of all, should I host my Shaylink node locally on a cloud platform or in a data center? So on the one hand, for initial testing purposes, local hosting is sufficient. So you can run your Shellic node on your home computer, deploy a developer environment, and test various circumstances and on-chain interactions. On the other hand, for running a production node, we highly recommend a cloud or data center hosted infrastructure to ensure high availability and including regional failovers and managed services. You might also consider a bare metal infrastructure due to the potential performance and security improvements and its cost efficiency, which is ideal for enterprise solutions. Okay, so as there are several cloud service providers, you need to decide which one to choose. So you might consider and compare different pricing models and offered services. The Two main aspects are infrastructure as a service and software as a service, where you have to compare the pricing models of various hardware specs of their virtual machines and services like serverless functions, managed databases, and cloud storage, just to give a few examples. In addition, you can also have a look at their offered bandwidth and at high availability solutions, including managed failovers. Yeah, so to sum it up, it definitely makes sense to test around with them and use free credits to explore their functionalities 
and see which platform suits you best. Okay, and once your shelling node is up and running, how does it generate revenue? Yeah, I'll jump in, in here. It's a good question many people come up with. And um, first of all, I think it's important to say that in contrast to proof of work or proof of stake, validator node, um, chaining node don't get paid for um, verifying transactions of blockchain, but for the execution of secure off-chain computation and the data transfer between smart contracts and real-world data feeds. So yeah, users need to pay node operators link um, to use the services they offer. And um, currently offered chain link node services include um, querying any public API, um, using external adapters as custom API uh, connections, or leveraging bootstrap services like the chain link price feeds, uh, verifiable random function, or chain link keepers. And so, yeah, the next logical follow-up question is, um, how can I find uh, users for my Chainlink node? And yeah, so first of all, I think it's important to state that there's an increasing number of smart contract developers and decentralized applications that are creating demand for uh, real-world data um, that is needed on chain. So uh, in our opinion, running nodes on test nets can be really beneficial um, if you add jobs to it, host external adapters as um, development teams uh, tend to use their and uh, develop their products on testnet before launching live on mainnet. So the active participation in hackathons, uh, developer workshops, and technical debates on Discord or other communities might be really helpful um, to connect you with um, others. And please also make sure to list your uh, Chainlink node on the, on the Chainlink market, uh, where you can also add jobs and external adapters to it. Um, and you can also try to get added to um, an access control chaining service, for example, like the price feeds, um, as there's a huge number of users in TVL um, that already exist with all the DeFi projects. Um, chaining needs to make sure that this price data um, is as accurate and reliable as possible. And so, yeah, the next question is, how can I get added to the price feeds? And yeah, we already mentioned it in the introduction. Um, Chainlink hosts a competition called the Oracle Olympics several times a year, where you can prove your node infrastructure's continuous functioning um, and gain some off-chain and on-chain reputation by demonstrating your team's DevOps and troubleshooting skills um, in various situations that production node operators have been facing in the past and are currently facing. And um, yeah, I will leave it to Rob to give you some more uh, hints how you can prepare best for the Oracle Olympics or for running production nodes in general. Yeah, so in our opinion, the most important preparation is gaining hands-on experience by deploying testnet nodes, for filling basic job requests and applying troubleshooting measures. In addition, make sure to study existing documentation and establish a highly available node environment. Another very important aspect is the deployment of external adapters, which are custom connections between web APIs and the Chainlink node. And also to configure a monitoring and alerting system, including your own emergency strategy. Last but not least, it should be mentioned that running production nodes can be very demanding and time intensive. So it is really helpful to collaborate with like-minded people to find new team members and also to uh, exchange with established node operators. Okay, and one of the most important technical decisions can be summarized by the question, should I run my own full nodes or use third-party node as a service subscriptions? So just a brief introduction. The Chainlink node needs a connection to a blockchain full node in order to interact with the target network. So on the one hand, you can choose the node as a service solution, which offers a very easy integration. But it should be mentioned that subscriptions offered by these service providers often are not suitable for the high amount of RPC calls used by a Chainlink node with a highly frequented blockchain interaction. But besides just to mention two service providers we've made positive experiences with are Fuse and Alchemy. 
On the other hand, you can run your own full nodes and achieve a better performance by configuring it for your own needs. Additional benefits are that you won't face any rate limitations and that you contribute to the decentrality of the respective network. It should be mentioned that the requirements of running an own full node can vary a lot on the network. So please do your own research before making a decision. But basically it can be said that running your own full node is significantly more cost efficient. Speaking of which, I will come to the last question now, namely, which costs do I need to consider to operate a production node? So as you can see, first of all, you need to cover the expenses for your technical infrastructure. In addition, you also need to consider various API subscriptions from premium data providers. And in order to transmit data on-chain, you need to ensure that your node wallet is sufficiently funded at all times to cover the transaction fees. Yes, so these were some of the most frequently asked questions of the community. And now I will leave it to Roger to sum everything up. Thanks, Fran. Um, yeah, I think we can say um, operating highly available production nodes is quite an ambitious project. So once again, we can just encourage everybody to collaborate with others, to join forces, as your team will be expected to be available 24-7. And um, it helped us a lot personally to... Uh, yeah, collaborate with others to join technical debates on Discord and invest a lot in our own education. Um, yeah, we also have to say that the number and quality of documentation and um, technical guides is also increasing at a rapid pace, uh, thus facilitating those uh, deployment and maintenance processes. And yeah, when you make your decision, if you should become a node op operator or not, um, yeah, you should also think of the long-term potential of chain hybrid smart contracts, which will all rely on um, independent dons. And I think we can barely imagine the potential and the impact of the recently announced uh, OCR 2.0 and uh, CCIP. So yeah, we can just encourage everybody who has the motivation to become a node operator, or for example, to leverage Linkpool's Chainlink node as a service platform, which was just announced and which excites us really, really a lot. So yeah. Um, this FAQ will be published uh, in the node operators channel as well and cover additional technical questions uh, which go beyond the scope of this panel right now. And later on is an own section on nodedocs.link. This is um, our future node operator debugging website. Um, we were recently awarded a training community grant for and yeah, we feel really honored about this. And this website will categorize the most relevant worn and error logs. Um, explain their origins and provide debugging solutions and should be one of our contributions to the long-term support of the whole Chainlink developer community. Um, as we think it's really important to educate as many people as possible about all of this and um, that the developers and node operators within this community should all work together to yeah, make this whole ch Chainlink ecosystem grow and become even more awesome than it already is. So yeah, um, we want to end this panel with a quote from Sergei Nazarov, namely, we are at the key moment in history where technology either enables distrust, division, and dictatorship, or it enables trust, collaboration, and fairness. Blockchains, smart contracts, and oracles are the technologies that will define which path we will take. So yeah. Thanks everybody for joining our panel, for being part of this unique community. Big shout outs to all the um, SmartCon watch parties and all other Marines all around the world. Um, enjoy the remaining events and yeah, take care everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you, Rob and Roger. The Oracle Olympics sound like something I'd definitely spend two weeks watching. Uh, if you're interested in becoming a metal worthy node operator, start your training now. 